Hey gang, welcome back to another episode of Smoke Meat with Jeff. Today, actually I should say this week, uh, we're going to be making some homemade smoked bacon. It takes about a little over a week to do. Uh, so we're going to take a little piece of pork belly like this and turn it into, into some delectable homemade smoked bacon. It's actually not as hard as it sounds. Uh, there's going to be a week-long uh, curing process uh, and then just a few hours on the smoker to uh, to give this thing some nice smoke flavor and just finish it up uh, so we can have some of our own homemade bacon cut as thick or as thin as you want. So uh, let me get on to some of the, uh, the basic ingredients. Um, I actually have two little slabs of uh, uh, pork belly. I got one here and I've got another one over here. I'm going to do bacon with one and I'm going to make some pancetta with the other one that you can see how to do in uh, one of my other uh, videos. But uh, let's get started on some of the basic ingredients, very basic ingredients, for making homemade smoked bacon happen. Just need some really basic supplies for making your own bacon. Um, we're going to need, of course, a couple of containers for measuring out our cure into. You're going to need a Ziploc bag, um, and you'll need a sharp knife uh, to remove the skin, but we won't actually be removing the skin from our our skin on pork belly until after the curing process. Um, and then for your food ingredients, of course you need a slab of pork belly. Um, you can do an entire pork belly, which you know is a nice big chunk of, uh, of, uh, of pork. I just got some little pieces because I'm going to work with uh, just making a small supply today. You do want to get it with the skin on. And when you go to pick uh, your pork belly, try and get it with as much meat on it as possible. Of course, you can't go wrong with a fatty piece of bacon, but I like mine with a little more meat on it. And then to make our cure, you are going to need some salt. You can use kosher salt. I'm actually going to be using just white sea salt today. You are going to need a little bit of sugar and what's called uh, pink salt or uh, nit uh, sodium nitrite. This will uh, keep things from going bad and uh, making yourself sick if you mess things up in the process. So. Um, let's get to getting our cure going and then we'll be throwing this in the fridge and then we'll, I'll see you in, uh, in about a week or so to throw this thing on the smoker. But luckily for you it's just a few seconds of time uh, after we get this thing into the, the refrigerator for curing. So let's move on to making our cure. Sea salt. So I think it's so much better than just uh, iodized salt. So to make your cure you're going to need about a pound of uh, your salt. And I'm actually making enough uh, cure here to do a, a fairly sizable pork belly. So if you had a full pork belly, you can get away with, uh, with not having to mess with the, the proportions on this. So I got about a, a pound of sea salt. I'm going to add in about eight ounces or so of sugar. That looks like looks good. And then for your sodium nitrate, you don't want to go crazy with this. Make sure you follow the directions with whatever sodium nitrate that you get uh, to keep the proportions correct because uh, you don't want to put too much in and of course you don't want to put too little in and run the risk of uh, creating some foodborne bacteria to grow. Mine calls for about, two, about one and a half ounces or so for a pound of salt. And I've got my little shot glass here. I know what my measurements are in this. Throw that in. And then we just uh, mix this up. Now that we have our cure uh, all mixed up, so salt, sugar, and some sodium nitrate, it's just going to be a matter of putting on a liberal coating on both sides uh, as well as both ends of your um, pork belly. Pork belly really doesn't require any preparation other than really coating it as so, flipping it over, and we're going to get the back side of it as well. And then from here, once we've got a really good coating of, uh, of our salt cure mix going, you're going to place it in your Ziploc bag. And you're just going to squeeze out as much air as you possibly can. Put, it, put this thing into the refrigerator and uh, for at least a week and as you do it you'll notice the salt will uh, kind of disappear down into the, the pork belly itself. 
and you're going to want to flip it over about every day or so. Just go in the fridge, take the whole Ziploc container, flip it over. And there we go. Got my uh, pork belly, nice coating of salt in the Ziploc bag. Now it's just a matter of uh, playing the waiting game. So I want you to go smoke something else on your, uh, on your barbecue or smoker while we're waiting for a week for this thing to uh, work its magic. Well, here we are a full seven days later uh, with uh, taking our, our slab of bacon that we are curing out of the refrigerator. Been flipping it over once a day. As you can see, I got a lot of, uh, a lot of liquid in the bottom of the bag. So at this point, uh, we're going to take this out of the bag over to the sink and just rinse this off really well. Um, I'm not going to smoke this until a little, a little bit later on today. And in the meantime, I'm going to take this whole slab and I'm just going to put it in a bowl of water. This is a completely optional step. Uh, what this does is it kind of cuts out a little bit of the, uh, the salt content so that this isn't quite as salty. You can use this process for up to a full day to pull some of that salt back out after the curing process. But then you're going to want to make sure you take it out and really let this thing dry off uh, for an hour or so um, before we get this onto the smoker. So I'm going to go wash this, get it into the water, and then I'm going to set up my smoker for a little bit later on today. Uh, I'm going to be smoking with applewood. I went and picked up some applewood specifically for doing the, the bacon today. Um, if you've got your smoker going and you've got a small piece of bacon, Go ahead and plan on doing something else, because if you're going to run your smoker, you may as well get your money's worth out of the, uh, the, the wood supply that you're putting into it for the day. So uh, go wash this off, throw out some water, prep the smoker, and then we'll be back to, uh, to get this thing on. And uh, we'll get a little closer to uh, our BLT sandwiches at the end of the day, well, uh, technically tomorrow. Sweet. <clears throat> at this point, smoker's up to temperature. <clears throat> My bacon cured, ready to go, ready to go on the smoker. Leave the skin on because uh, at the end you can decide whether you want to take the skin off or not, but it's a lot easier to take the skin off after it's been smoked. And like I said earlier, um, go ahead and plan some other things to smoke while you have your smoker going because this isn't going to take up all the room on your smoker. Other things I have on my smoker today will be some, uh, let's see, bacon weave wrapped macaroni and cheese stuffed meatloaf. That's right, I said macaroni and cheese stuffed meatloaf. It's going to be amazing. Um, and some uh, bacon wrapped stuffed jalapenos. So I'm going to be loading up my smoker today. So I'm going to go ahead and get this on. It should take about three hours, 250 degrees. Our target temperature is 150 degrees uh, at, at its center. So get your digital meat probe out, whether it be an eye grill or your instant read thermometer, <clears throat> just to check on it every once in a while. Um, so. I'm going to get this thing onto the smoker and uh, start prepping up some of my, my ingredients for tomorrow to make my amazing BLT sandwiches. Well, it looks like my slab of bacon is ready for the final step here. Um, we got to an internal temperature of 150 degrees. And then for removing this, this uh, top layer of fat, which is entirely optional depending on who you talk to. Uh, some people like to remove it, others don't. I'm going to remove it. All you got to do is just grab and give it a little bit of a tug and just use a little knife every once in a while to kind of help it along. But you should be able to basically peel this top layer of fat, or the, I should say top layer of skin, right off. A little bit of cleanup going on here. It's coming off not too not too bad. And there we go. We got our top layer of skin off. I would save this, use it in some uh, crock pot recipes, maybe with some uh, baked beans or, or something like that. And there we have our uh, our final slab of bacon took the top layer off there just going to uh, leave this in the refrigerator overnight because you really want this to get nice and cold and then tomorrow we can start slicing this up to make whatever it is we want to do with our bacon some BLT sandwiches or whatever I'm not gonna wait I'm gonna slice off a little piece right now to take a look at what we got all 
Oh, look at that. Smoked bacon. And I, of course, I went with the nice meaty piece, so there's not a boatload of fat on there. So this is uh, Jeff with Smoked Meat with Jeff. Have fun on your smoker, and I'll see you next time when uh, when I figure out what else I'm going to do on our on my smoker. Later.